Hello and thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be showing you today how I make pens out of sticks. I'm often asked this when people look at my work and say how, how have I done the drawing. I do the, some of my drawings using twigs, um, basically because you can get a lot of variety in your line and it makes your picture a little bit more interesting. So at the end of the video I'll put some of those pictures up, the ones that I've done using sticks so that you can see what I mean. Okay, so first of all, people say, well, which, which type of um, wood do you use? And actually, it doesn't really matter too much because you'll get a lot of different um, lines and things using different ones. Some are easier than others, but just use what's handy to you. So this is just outside the door and it's a rowan tree. Um, now, some will dry quicker than others. And as they go dry, they go a bit brittle. And then you might want to make some more, um, you know, so they won't keep forever. So once you've got it, obviously get rid of the leaves and things. I'll just chuck those on the floor for now. And then just cut a piece that's, you know, a reasonable length that you might think for a pen. And maybe even a, a thicker piece there. And I won't bother with that piece. Okay, and then once you've you've got that, just to make it more comfortable to hold, you might want to take some of those little nodules off there. So just nice and slowly. So this is a Stanley knife that I'm using. But just be controlled. I use the back of my thumb to push it nice and slowly. And then to make your actual nib, just think about making a pen shape. So first of all, take some off one side. Keep checking to see how thin you've got it, looking at that end. And make lots of different shapes and sizes. Now can you see how that in the middle is a lot softer because it's new green wood and you've got that soft. Just take that out with the tip of your pen, yeah, sorry, the tip of your knife. Because that's where your ink will go up to form a well to hold the ink. And then just shape the tip to how you want it. So a little bit off each side and a bit more pointed. And you can go really fine if you like, or you can keep them quite chunky. That's entirely up to you. But what you do need is a nice clean line across the edge there. So sometimes when you're finished, you might want to just, I'll just make sure you can see that. You might just want to, you know, cut across the end again to make sure that's nice and flat. No bits hanging off it. Okay, so I'll put them out of the way. And just blow off all those bits. Right, so these are some I've made earlier. Um, probably a couple of months ago actually and that again that one's a rowing and I think that one is, is as well you can see how they've gone quite dry um, and how inky they are so first of all so I'll talk about the different inks I use as well so this is a calligraphy ink and it's a sepia one from Windsor and Newton um, it's not water fast but it is light fast so I use it quite a bit and add water to it to make it move around a little bit to have a bit of variety. So it's not one you'd want to use if you want to keep the um, ink entirely where it is. And I use this one in the little tree drawing that I did a, a couple of months ago. And I'll put the link up here to that one if you haven't seen that. This was using this ink. Okay, so this is one of the pens I've had a while. And you can see it's drying out a bit. It doesn't hold just as much ink, but you can keep... Reapplying, but you get 
a nice bit of variety in your lines, especially if you're doing things like trees. Okay, I'll try another one of the older ones I've got again. So this was a, a thicker one to begin with. And you're twisting it, you can see how the diff you can get those different um, shapes there with your line. So this is the one I've just made now. And it won't dry out as quick as the other two because it's young and fresh. It's got more, it's holding more ink. Okay, so if you want to have a go sometime with making sticks, that's how you do it. And then you can just keep those, um, you know, for time, for another time. But of course you can just, if you want, also have a play about making some lines just with, um, without actually shaping yourself a stick. Obviously you're going to get a lot thicker lines. But you know, you could get some interesting abstracty shapes as well. Okay, so that was the calligraphy one. So the other two th things I use for doing my drawings is this pen, which you can see is cracked here. I've had it for years. Um, I've got a few different nibs for it. What I did actually do was buy some nibs um, off eBay. I think somebody was having a clear out and they come across a lot, lot of old nibs in a drawer. And so I've got a, quite a selection of different widths of ni nibs. So you can see the difference with the pen and the sticks, how the pen is much more uniform. Um, so if you wanted to be more precise, you would probably go for the pen. Give that a wash. And then the other way I draw with my inks is by using the actual dibber that's in the pot. So this, the last one was a Windsor & Newton calligraphy ink. This one is a Faber-Castell acrylic ink. So this is permanent and light fast. So once this is once this is on, the water isn't going to lift it, so you can paint over the top of it. So you could do a full drawing with this, let it dry, and then paint over the top of it, and it still stay stay put. Okay. So um, and I draw with the actual dibber. Now this is easier than it looks. You've got to have quite a bit of patience and time. You will get accidents. You will get, you know, big splodges that you don't know what to do with. What you can do is squirt the rest of the ink out and then with an empty dropper, suck some of that back up. If you don't like it where it is. But this takes time and patience to, um, you're not exerting any pressure on there much at all when you're drawing with it. So a little bit of practice is needed for this technique. So get some rough paper and have a play. And of course there are ways of correcting mistakes. If you do make a mess with your ink, you could just leave it, get as much of it off as you can. Also you could use a tissue, you know, to get, when where you've made a mistake, you can use a tissue to draw some of it up. You could add some water and try and wash some of it off as well carefully. Um, but if you leave it to dry, then you, you could then go over it with some white acrylic paint or some white acrylic ink and then start and work on top of that as, as gain you know with mixed media so don't worry too much if you make a, a, a mistake there are ways of correcting it okay so that one was the black dale Rowney, and i've also used that quite a bit in the sepia so the same one but it's sepia and i've got colored ones of these as well to use for different things but for my actual drawing um when i'm doing the animals and trees and things i i usually use either the sepia or the black sepia is a little less less harsh than the black and then i've got this other one as well and this is um it's a bit of a pain this one because the top it seems to leak a lot whenever i open it i seem to be covered in ink um so again it's a dale rowney one and, a, and it's a calligraphy ink again and it is light fast and water fast um so it says permanence there two stars so hopefully it's not going to fade too much um let's see what it says and uh, none of that is in English <laughs> yeah but I'm sure when I bought it I bought it because it did say that it was water fast 
and that's this is a bit more I mean it says brown on it but it's a much more reddy colour can you see that so it's quite nice for some things it just depends what you want it for but I bought it because like I say it's water fast okay so those are the main inks that I use with my drawing like I say I'll pop some pictures up now for you to see what I mean about um, using the different techniques to get the different lines and things like I say that tree one with the calligraphy ink I show you how sometimes you do want one that's not water fast so that you can use that um, the lightest the ink where it comes out from the drawing I'll just show you um, get a brush you know if you if you want to make a canopy to your trees and you'll allow the ink to go into that that can be useful sometimes, you don't always want it to be completely water fast. Okay, so like I said, so I'll put the some pictures at the end showing the different ones and if you did want to see the one where I used that, I'll put the link to that down below as well. Okay, so if you do have some drawing inks, enjoy uh, having a go with them and of course don't forget you can always use a brush to draw as well. Uh, that was one thing I did mean, mean to say and I for completely forgot. So, um, you know, quite often it's easy just to use a brush as well and again you can get a variety of line by the amount of pressure that you put on your brush okay so enjoy your drawing and uh, thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon bye for now